Before we talk about the exposure and recovery sliders, you first have the option of using Camera Raw's auto or default controls, which are just located above the exposure slider. So if we click on auto, you can see that it's had quite a dramatic effect to your image. Now, the auto control enables Camera Raw to evaluate your raw file and it attempts to produce an optimal distribution of values throughout your image. So as you can see, as I jump between default and auto, if you look at the histogram, it's sort of evenly distributed all the information in that file across all values. Uh, and as you can see, it, it hasn't done a fantastic job by any means, but it's definitely something that you could utilize if you had uh, a large batch of photos that you really didn't want to spend the time trying to edit and you just wanted to run them through the converter quickly. Now, the default uh, link here actually provides a simple way of returning back to Camera Raw's default settings in the basic panel. Now, these settings can be customized by saving your own preset settings and that's quite simple to do once you've made your settings in the basic panel and actually adjusted a few things uh, you can go up to this little icon up the top here and click on it and you'll notice you have a drop down menu now the options that we're actually looking for down here are load settings save settings and save new camera raw defaults so what you really want to do is set up your presets you want to save those settings and then you want to load them and you want to actually save them as your new Camera Raw defaults. So every time you open up a new raw file in Camera Raw, it will use those presets automatically. And so it's quite easy to jump back by clicking on the default settings here back to your original presets, which is really quite handy. Now the exposure control, um, it basically maps out the highlight values in your photograph. It's really quite a powerful slider and as you can see you can go from minus four stops in values to plus four stops um, so as you can see it does have a dramatic effect on your image and it should be the first adjustment that you make when uh, concerned with retaining detail in your highlights so as you can see here with my clipping information all I need to do to retain that highlight uh, detail is actually just move your slider to the left hand side. Now another way to look at this information is to actually hold down the alt key on a PC or the option key on a Mac and it will bring up a black <laughs> a black canvas primarily and what this shows you is all of the information that is actually being clipped in your photo uh, which is actually a really simplistic way of looking at it. So the idea here is to uh, basically exclude any other colors other than black um, to the point where you're just reducing them until they just disappear and you don't want to go too far past that point uh, and by doing this you can actually see which uh, highlights are actually extremely uh, blown out and which ones aren't you can also do the same for blacks which actually shows you a uh, a white canvas instead which you can actually see here it'll actually show the clipping of black um, information but we'll leave that for another video um, in some cases using the expo exposure slider can retrieve up to an additional stop of highlight information or data in your raw file which is extremely amazing especially considering if you if you went out on site and actually shot an extremely high dynamic range image and you use some of the techniques such as exposure to the right in order to expose your raw file correctly and as I'm sure you're well aware and you've read before that with raw files most of the information that is captured is on the right hand side of the histogram so in the, the first stop of information is actually half of which is normally contained in a raw file so for example with a 12-bit camera you have 4096 levels of information that the camera captures but the the first stop of highlight information is actually half of that which is 2048 levels of information I believe if I've got that right now um, the recovery slider is the other tool that I wanted to quickly go over now this is extremely powerful and I'm going to show you something that I think will blow your mind um, 
but the recovery slider itself allows you to recover additional highlight detail without affecting any other areas of the photograph itself. So as you can see here, as I move it to the far right, it's only really affected the highlight values and not too much else. Although the midtones and the shadows have slightly changed as if you look at the histogram as I do that, you can see that the highlight values are the ones that move the most. Now the interesting thing to note here is if I go and put this at 100% and then I grab my exposure slider and I slightly move that to the right, you'll notice that no clipping warnings are showing up. And the further I go, there's still no clipping warnings showing up. So as I actually move to the right, you can see in the histogram itself that the highlight values are actually being um, retained or, or actually being pushed up and not being clipped simply because we have the, the recovery slider to the far right. So that's actually quite amazing at the amount of information that it's actually um, retaining or recovering for us. And as you can see here, if I grab the recovery slider and actually move back to the left-hand side of the image, they all start to, to be clipped and, and blow out again. So it is quite a powerful tool uh, that you really should uh, think about using when editing your raw photos in Camera Raw.